Zeb Strike Army. My name is Jacob, as always, and I'm the advocate and head coach for your reigning, defending, undisputed APA champions, the Green Bay Pikachus. And this is round number one, the first round of the playoffs, aka the wild card round, I would like to say it, of the APA season number three Wi Fi playoffs. We're facing Crimson Seabad, aka Chase, the head coach of the Detroit Steel Wings. He's coming on a very impressive four wins in a row to clinch playoffs. He's now 7-5. and five. He was the last team in last weekend in week number 12. Uh, so it's very interested. He beat the likes of Panther, A-Drive, and Lynx Forte. And who did he beat in week number 9? I honestly don't remember. Was it Medicus? I think it may have been Medicus he, who he beat last. No, no, it was Kyle Late. He beat Kyle Late to start the streak. And he ended with Lynx Forte. There we go. I'm remembering everything now, so that's A-OK. -okay. But this is going to be a lot different of a team than we... Well, it's going to be a lot different of a battle than what we faced in week number six versus him. He's going to kind of expect some things from our end. Um, so we had to change it up. We didn't change our team too, too much. We have five of the six original members on it still. So that's really important to note. However... Um, we bring a certain Pokemon that is kind of questionable of why I would bring it, considering what he's all got in his team, you know? So, to be honest with you, to be honest, um, it's going to be interesting for sure. We have a game plan, though, and our game plan is to sweep in the Halligate late game. Um, it's not a Choice Scarf set. Uh, you'll get to what the set it is, but in order to help uh, Nihaligo sweep, we needed to build a certain way, a certain direction, so it could sweep no matter what. So, what we're going to do is go over our team, his team, and why we brought the six that we brought. So let's get started. So, our, oh, make sure you follow him in the description down below to his Twitter and YouTube. He's nearing 30,000 subscribers, I'm pretty sure. So, it's a pretty big milestone, so let's hope, hope he gets there soon. But anyway, uh, first, our team is Zygarde 50%, Mega Manectric, Fortress, Azelf, Jellicent, Nihiligo, Embor, Licky Licky, Lipard, Masquerine, and Tapu Bulu. Our Z Pokemon are Zygarde 50 and Tapu Bulu, of course. It's been like that the entire season. And I'm glad we brought Z, Z moves on both of them, so. <laughs> Bulu hasn't came nearly as much as I would have liked. But, I don't know, I, I just don't want to force it onto a team. Like, it, this team, it could potentially have came, but, spoiler, we're not bringing it because of certain threats on his team. But anyway, his team has followed Latios, Excadrill, Mega Tyranitar, Arcanine, his mascot, uh, Roserade, Aromatis, Hitmonlee, Cloyster, Golbat, Galvantula, and Gyarados. His Z Pokemon are Latios and Gyarados. So, two super spooky Z Pokemon for sure. Because Latios has Dragon Dance and Call of Mine, Gyarados has Dragon Dance, and both are pretty spooky for sure. Um, I'd say Gyarados is arguably more spooky, but to a degree, it's not really. Uh, maybe Latios is kind of, but. It all depends what type of um, set each person, or what he might bring, you know. But we have ways of checking. We, like, he's a Dragon Dance Latios Fortress. We'll check it. Well, actually, not with our Fortress set. I lied. Well, we'll figure it out. Don't worry. I highly doubt he would be um, Dragon Z, um, a Z move Dragon Dance with Latios. I think... The best Z move user on his team is probably just Gyarados in, in this matchup, at least. So, if you were bringing like Z Psychic Gladios, that wouldn't be terrible because our freaking Dark type is a lot like So, yeah, that would be pretty. That wouldn't be good. But anyway, that's not the point. The point is, uh, we have a team and we know how we're going to try to win with our team. That is for sure. So, let's get started. Um, if you guys remember from week six, um, we basically got our Licky Licky got froze like turn five, four or five, so we we're playing behind pretty much most of the game. And then we were like, okay, we can win Zygarde. We just have to sack this mon, this mon, this mon, this mon. Well, basically, we, we had to scout. As soon as he revealed that he was not um, HP Ice Rose Raid, that was my cue to tr come in and try to win. So that's exactly what we were doing. We knew what our win con was, and we went for it. So that's what we did. However, I know I'm pretty darn sure he'll bring a few certain changes to his team. First and foremost, I highly doubt he's going to bring a Romatisse, especially seeing that um, it didn't really chew plus or neutral. It didn't. It, it didn't even chew like neutral thousand arrows. We were adamant very well, so he'd either have to be physically defensive 
or just not bring it at all because we're grounding him Z, so he's going to have to play around that with protect and stuff, and then we could potentially set up another Dragon Dance because Moonblast is not going to kill us if he's defensive. If he specs, it would kill us, obviously, but that's specs. If it's specs, it's not going to be an issue because Jellicent can pretty much wall that thing. Um, and so we're not really too, too worried about it. So I don't think he'll bring Aromatisse this time, and if he does, it's going to be fi completely physically defensive. Next up, I'm pretty sure he will bring a similar Mega Tyranitar set. I don't... He might try to, like, use one of my passive mods, like Fortress, as setup fodder. Um, but that really won't work out for him because, um, the reason why it won't work out is because Fortress has Earthquake to always break a sub with our investment and always break a sub once we get that far. So, um, so I don't think, I don't know if you bring that Tyranitar set. I think his Tyranitar set was perfectly fine last time, except for substitute Earthquake for Crunch. And then he's got a good set because he's got like Flamethrower, Fire Blast, Ice Beam. He's got Flamethrower slash... Fire Blast, Ice Beam, Rocks, and Crunch. That hits my team really, really hard. Um, not re Nothing on my team really appreciates that moveset. Um, Earthquake, I'm not really too sure why he brought last time, considering I had Bulu. Um, and like, Assault Vest Bulu kind of just walled that set. So, I kind of think he might not bring that, or might not, he might not, he won't bring Earthquake again, is what I'm saying. So I really think he'll bring something like, like I just said, Crunch, a Fire move, Ice move or Ice Beam would be, and then he would bring um, rocks because it is his best rocker. He's only had two rockers on the team, being Excadrill and Tyranitar. Um, Excadrill can actually just win if he chips down the right things, if he chips down Jellison, if he um, uh, chips down Zygarde, he can win with Excadrill. I'm not gonna let him do that or do my best to not let him do that, but he can potentially win late game with Excadrill if he plays his cards right. So I need to prevent that all I can. Um, the only other alternative for Excadrill this game, I really think, would be like Spit F with like Rocks, Toxic, Earthquake, and I don't know what the last move is, but the issue with that set for him is a Coil Zygarde just sets up all over that. A Coil Sub Zygarde sets up all over that, so I really can't afford, I don't think he can afford that, so I think he needs enough attack to break subs for sure. Well, it always breaks subs, but if I set up a Coil, then it won't, so... He basically would have to let Excadrill die, and I don't think he wants to do that. Uh, I th really think Excadrill is one of his better win cons. That, and, like, the th awesome thing about Gyarados in this matchup is he really can't afford to run uh, Adamant, because if he runs Adamant at plus one or Mega Manectric Wild Speed, we also have a Zelf in case it somehow gets to um, plus... I think we outspeed plus two, actually, too, with his Elf here. Yep, our Zelf also speeds plus two Adamant Gyarados. So if he tries to get cheeky and get up to plus two, there's no way. Like if he's jolly, he's not going to be hitting nearly as hard. So that means we'll be able to take his hits better. Like Jellison will be able to deal with that kind of well. Um, so I really don't, We a lot of our Pokemon pressure Gyarados anyway. So it's going to be really difficult for him to actually sweep with it for sure. So... I don't think so. Uh, as for him on I just it's hard for him to bring him on Lee again because it didn't really do anything. Kind of gets walled by Jellison. I don't expect him on Lee to come. But we have a way to beat it in case it does come. I can't just not prep for it and then we just lose to it. So it kind of sucks. We're kind of forced with the same item with some more Pokemon. Um, so anyway, let's get started. First up, we have uh, Zygarde, 50% right here with the Yachi Berry. Uh, Dragonets, Extreme Speed, Thousand Arrow, Superpower. Our speed? Okay. So our speed's like two more base points higher than it was. Because I think Chase might look back and be like, hey, let's try to catch him. Let's go to 142 because he was at 141 last week or uh, the previous game. So we're going to go to 143 to see if he tries to creep that. So we're going to go to 143 just to be on the safe side perfectly. Because if he wants to creep what our Zygarde was last time and really try to counter team us, not going to happen. Um, so that's really perfect. Um, I, I, it's only like... There's only, what, 16 more EVs in general, so it didn't really matter too much. So I wasn't that frustrated about using those more EVs. Um, 188 attack because at plus... Was it plus 1 or plus 2? No, plus 1. It'll Oko uh, Rose Raid after rocks with the investment... Not after rocks. It'll Oko Rose Raid no matter what with the investment I envision that he'll bring. And I don't know if he'll bring Scarf Rose Raid again because... 
that takes on the prediction. Like, if he's like Life Orb or Black Sludge with Leech Seed or something like that, if he's more of a, a nuisance, um, mostly. And the thing is, Rosary can have one hidden power. HP Fire, HP Ice, or HP Ground. Considering that Zygarde was as big of a threat last time as it was, I feel like he's kind of inclined to want to bring HP Ice this time around because Zygarde is such a big threat to his team. He pretty much needs every single Pokemon on his entire team to be able to do damage to Zygarde so it can't set up. Golbat lets Zygarde set up essentially. Like, it's not going to want to appreciate a thousand arrows into another thousand arrows because it's super effective still. I'm not wanting to do that. Um, so I don't think Golbat's coming. I really don't. Plus, it's just Nihaligo fodder anyway, so most of his team's Nihaligo fodder. Um, even his checks, uh, his drill and Tyranitar are Nihaligo fodder based on what we brought, depending on what his spreads are, of course. But we'll have to scout for that and see what he does and what he wants to do. But honestly, I ain't too worried. And honestly, he really kind of needs to bring dual ground stab with Excadrill because if we bring Bulu. Excadrill will not do that much damage to Jellicent in the grassy terrain with Earthquake. Iron Head does nothing. I think he needs to bring dual, dual ground stab with Drill Run and Earthquake. I really do. I think it's really important actually that he brings dual ground stab because Masquerade it ain't coming this matchup. It doesn't really have a good matchup, honestly. Um, it just doesn't get the coverage I need this matchup. I mean, it could do some. I wish it got like Tinted Lens as a backup ability. That would have been pretty nice if we got like Tinted Lens as like a different ability besides Intimidate. That would have been pretty sweet. And then we would have been able to spam uh, Bug Buzz pretty freely versus his team. Like, Specs Bug Buzz actually hit his team pretty hard outside of uh, Gyarados and Aromatis. Even that, like Tinted Lens, Specs Bug Buzz would have been pretty cool, spam pretty spammable versus his team. But doesn't get that, so sadly, we can't. So, we're not going to bring Masquerade. So, I really think he could just afford duels. He doesn't... And plus, Iron Head's still going to hit it decently hard anyway. So, he doesn't need Rock Slide. So, honestly, like, he could afford to go that. Especially if we have Grassy Terrain. Because what, what is it going to do to... It does nothing to Jellison. He'd have to eliminate... That would just be another roadblock that he has to do in order to win the game. Where he can hit Drill Run and at least hit Jellison harder than what Earthquake would have in Grassy Terrain. So, I think Drill Run's going to come. I'm pretty sure. Just in case, well, he'd bring Earthquake too, because if we don't bring it that way, he's got that stab at least still as well. Um, he could probably potentially bring Life Orb, it all depends. Um, but anyway, yeah, I believe this is the best Zygarde spread, this matchup. It breaks Excadrill and Titar, things that Nihaligo doesn't necessarily like, but we'll get to Nihaligo last because it is our win condition. Um, this potentially could be a win condition too, but yeah, we have Yachi mostly for like Ice Shark Cloister, because Superpower is going to do a lot to it. I, I, I'm gonna try to prevent clicking superpower versus Titar so I can save a, a powerful plus one superpower versus Cloyster if we need to go that route. Depending on how the game goes, I'm pretty sure physically defensive Cloyster will come. I, I, I don't, I can't envision um, a setup Cloyster coming this game. Just, it, it didn't do it. It wouldn't have done, it didn't do anything last game. It didn't because. It won't do anything to my team because of Fortress and Jellison combined. There's no way. And those two are actually do not match up badly against this team at all, really. Fortress kind of eh versus Arcanine and like HP Fire Mons. But other than that, Fortress is pretty good. And Fire Blast on um, Kitar. But like Jellicent kind of just sits there versus a lot of his team. Except for like, I don't know, like Aromatis can sit there versus um, Drill. It can sit there versus depending on the Lottie spread. I really expect Modest Scarf or Timid Scarf Latios to come. Because he needs an offensive check to plus one Zygarde. His defensive check can be Cloyster. His offensive check needs to be Latios. He needs to be this time. Like, it just is, I don't really think he's got an option for it not to be a Scarf Latios. And that'll force his ways. Um, because next up, we're going to talk about our Jellicent right here. Um, what Jellicent does to a modest Scarf Latios is we can live... A Draco Meteor into another Draco Meteor after rocks. And then we can click recover and just spam recover and be okay. And we'll get it back up to full. So Draco is not going to do any like like I'm not really afraid of a Scarf Latios. Um but if it's not Scarf, then I'm not really too afraid of it either. Um because we have ways of checking it. So 
And we have an offensive way of checking Scarf Latios too, which we're going to get to in just a minute. But we'll talk about that right before we talk about Nihaligo. So, yes, Culverberry again, because we can take... Well, the, the special defense is because of that... Uh, because of... Uh, what's the shit? <laughs> because of the Draco Media. And then we just have the rest of the defense because we need... Defense, why not? We don't need uh, um, any offensive capabilities, any speed, really. But we have a cover, Toxic, Nightshade, and Scald. Scald, for obvious reasons. Nightshade to break subs on po Pokemon. That's it. We need it to break subs on Pokemon. That's what we need it for. No matter what, it has to happen. It, it just has to happen. So, um, Nightshade breaks Gyarados subs. Uh, night, Nightshade. Huh. Nightshade, well, Scald should break a Tyranitar sub, but I don't, unless we don't need Jellicent anymore, I'm not just going to leave it in versus a Tyranitar. And if he's got Pursuit, well, then there goes our Cold Barbarian, unfortunately. Um, hopefully he doesn't bring Pursuit T-Tar plus um, him on the That'd be kind of frustrating, not even going to lie, but that's something we're going to have to play around on this team for sure. But Jellicent's there to pretty much stop Latios in its track. And if he wants to trick a Scarf, well, that's, I don't think that's a good idea. I, I don't think tricking a scarf. I think Memento might be a little bit better uh, if he brings that, so we can potentially set up with Gyarados or or uh, Titar or any of his sweepers, even Excadrill in the sand. Um, then again, he'd have to bring like Sandstorm to get more sand damage. The thing, the crappy thing about his, he's only going to have four turns of sand realistically uh, at the most with Drill, so that's awesome. Unless he brings Sandstorm with Drill. Um, I think other Pokemon on his team probably get Sandstorm, but not too, too much. But anyway, let's go to our defense Pokemon. We have literally the same Fortress spread almost. It's a little bit different. Um, but we have 20 attack with Earthquake this time because to break T-Tar subs. That's max HP T-Tar subs. I doubt he'd be like, I mean, I guess he could be like Jolly Dragon Dance with, because if he's adamant, um, Gyarados will outspeed. And so will our Zelf. Which we are bringing. So, I'm pretty sure uh, that he won't bring max HP sub. He, I mean, he could, but we're still going to break his subs, and that's what I'm going for. I don't want Gyro Ball. I want Earthquake, because it hits more things. And we sub SD, Magnet Rise, Earthquake, Excadrill. Well, kudos to the man. He's going to set up on Fortress. I'm not going to stay in with Fortress anyway, more than likely, because of that potential set. I'll just go straight to Jellicent if I have to, because Jellicent is an answer to that. So we need to kind of keep Jellicent relatively healthy to a degree. Um, I do not want to get rid of Latios' item because if he's Scarf like I anticipate, that means he's got to lock himself in one move. If he locks himself in the Draco, now Hello can come in. If he locks himself in Psy Shock, Zygarde can come in. So either way, we're going to try to take advantage of that. Um, I mean, the Psychic might be a little bit better for him. But, like, we're still really bulky with Zygarde, so we can take a Psychic. So, it'd be, it all depends what he locked himself into. We're, we might have to scout that. And it sucks. It really sucks. I, I can't... I have to have Rapid Spin, because if he brings webs, I can't remove the webs. I can't remove the webs. And just the fact that it's there means I have to bring Rapid Spin on Fortress. I don't want to bring Rapid Spin Fortress. I'd much rather have Gyro Ball. I really would. But if he brings Galvantula, and if he gets webs up, we have to be able to remove them. Because he doesn't have a ghost type. And I was not going to bring Masquerade with Defog here. So, I absolutely have to bring Fortress with Rapid Spin. Plus, it's just really nice, because we can Rapid Spin Spikes away as well. So, that's really important, I, I think, as well. So, there's that. Fortress the same. Akaberry, pretty much. A lot of Spit F. Um, just, you know, EVs. Yeah, you know, just perfect EVs. Bolt Switch will... Break subs from Gyarados, even if it's like really, really bulky. Uh, and get initiative into Mega Manectric. So, let's, speaking of Mega Manectric, let's go to that next. Uh, very similar spread. Now I had this wrong. I remember in week six, I said, We have enough speed to outspeed Adam and Gyarados. Yes, we do. No, 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 you didn't, Jacob. He, he didn't bring it, and he could have gotten you there. Now, you have enough speed for... Actually, now well, we did have enough speed for Adam and Gyarados. Wasn't Adam and Gyarados... Um, Wasn't, I, I'm pretty sure Adam and Gyarados was uh, 132, wasn't it? Now I have to check. No, 133 Adam and Gyarados is. Yeah, it 
We made enough speed for a jolly Tyranitar now, I think. Um, is that what we did? I thought we did that. Yeah, jolly Tyranitar, we outspeed now. Um, that, I, okay. <laughs> I wasn't lying. Okay, no. No, I was right. We had enough speed for Adam and Gyarados. Now we have enough speed for Jolly T-Tar because it's not that much more EVs into speed. So I figured, well, we may as well do that in case it's that. Like, sure, our moves in Signal Beam will not be doing an extremely amount of damage. But if we need it to check a plus one Tyranitar, we may as well just put those uh, two more base speed in there. And I think it was 16 EVs. Um, so it's better. I'd rather be safe than sorry. Um, I'd just rather do that. You know, and this is honestly, it's gonna say it's gonna be intimidating, obviously, when we mega evolve in game. But obviously, running the lightning rod is a normal ability. Uh, four attack moves, Mega Manectric. Just does what it needs, what we need it to do. Didn't do much at all in the last game, but I actually think it could potentially clean up late game, depending on its Pokemon left. If Drill's out of sand and it's not scarfed, uh, if T Tar is weakened, if Latios is weakened. And, well, it, it, we wouldn't stay in on Latios because more than likely it'd be Scarfed. So the only time I'd really want to remove Latios' to Scarf is if um, it was like Last Mon Manectric and I wanted, if it was like Azel versus Man, and Manectric versus um, a Scarf Latios and we our, our knockoff can kill it or U turn can kill it. I mean, it might be better off to go that route. Uh, but it's really hard fitting all the moves that I need on my Pokemon this week. Um, I wasn't really able to bring Licky Licky. First and foremost, I decided against Licky Licky. Licky Licky was on the team. Um, and then I started mocking with Phantom Base AK Tyler, so shout out to you man for helping me mock uh, for this battle. Licky Licky was just being really passive. It really wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. And it had a really bad case of 4 Moose Slot Syndrome. I wanted something to phase, like Dragon Tail. I wanted electric coverage for Garros, like Thunderbolt. I wanted, like, a fighting move, like Hammer Arm for T-Tar and Excadrill. I wanted so many moves. I could have ran Wish three attacks, but then it's going to get so chipped so easily because Wish Protect is, like, peanut butter and jelly. You kind of need it to go together for the most part. Uh, yes, you could have just ran Wish, but I was running, like, it's just... I wasn't keep staying healthy as much with Licky Licky. I think we had a few games with it, and it just wasn't working as well as I wanted. I'm just like, I'm like, well, I'm thinking to myself, I need a check to like plus uh, one Jolly Gyarados. Um, so I'm just like, yeah, let's let's go this route instead, because that way we don't have to scarf into Heligo. Because I was doing some calcs, and I realized a certain item on Heligo just utterly wrecks his team. So what? Our Scarfer is going to be actually is Scarfed his Elf because it still can check a Jolly plus one Gyarados so pretty effectively. So we have Thunderbolt and that'll just nuke it if we need to. We have U turn, Psychic, and Magic Room. You might be wondering why in the holy hell do you have Magic Room? Well, young Grasshopper, say Sand's just about to end. It's Excadrill. Okay, not okay. That's a terrible example. Say, um, Sand is. Say, say, Drill is Scarfed, we figure out. And, okay. So yeah, say he brings Dual Scarfers. He brought Dual Scarfers the first game. So say he brings Dual Scarfers this game again with, like, Latios and Excadrill Drill this time. I don't think Drill will be Scarfed. I don't. But just say it is. And we're in versus a Zelf, right? And I know Drill is in range of foul play from the Helico. So we click Magic Room. Scarfs are gone, right? So what happens then? So Magic Room takes his turn, it's just like Trick Room, so we have four turns left. We go into Heligo, which is a Life Orb into Heligo. I usually hate the item Life Orb. I'm usually just, I don't, I'm hell bent against not using it. But we're using it this time, because it does so well versus his team. Life Orb Follow Play does a lot to Excadrill. Sludge Wave hits Aromatis, Roserade, Hitmonlee, Cloyster, Power Gem hits Golbat, Arcanine, Gyarados. Grass Knight hits Tyranitar. This thing absolutely nukes his team. Um, so if it's a Spideft drill to an Adamant drill, so follow play, Life Orb follow play will do anywhere from 40.5% to 75.5%. Well, that, okay, not in one cal, not, depending on his spread, of course. So if he's like a Spideft one, it'll do like 40 to 48. If he's an offensive one, it'll do like 63 to 75, somewhere in that general vicinity. 
But I will scout the set really quick. So as long as he's out of the sand, we're good. We are good. So that's good. We just have to be really careful with how we play this game. Our main lead's probably gonna be Fortress, but don't be surprised if I lead Manectric or Zygarde. I could lead any of three of those. I will more than likely not lead Jolicent, Azelf, or Naheligo. Naheligo's our Wincon. I will not risk that. Um, Zygarde, Manectric, or Fortress. And honestly, I don't think he'd expect a Zygarde lead, because usually, more often than not, Zygarde has been our win condition, like all year. So he's not gonna expect that as a lead, and I think we can really get him going. I really think um, we can potentially just see what happens, you know? I can just, I can I can get him good by leading Zygarde. Be like, I led Zygarde once though in week 10, I think, against Medicus. So I'm not opposed to leading it, don't get me wrong. But more often than not, I'm not gonna lead it because usually it's been our win condition. So I'm gonna anticipate Chase to think that same way. Um, but yeah. Like I was saying, and then uh, with Grass Knot to for Life or Grass Knot to Tyranitar, it's 46 to 55, and that's max HP Tyranitar. Mega Tyranitar. So, yeah, it's pretty crazy how strong the Heligo is this matchup. And I don't, I'm glad I didn't realize it then, because I might have gone, brought this set then, and we wouldn't have it for now, and he'd have to prepare for it. Now he doesn't have to prepare for it, so I'm glad I didn't necessarily realize that. And oh, I do need to explain one more thing with this team. So basically, you gotta see this spread. So we, we, okay, we're not creeping anything with Naheligo, and that's because we wanna hit, be able to hit as hard as we possibly can with Naheligo here. And um, with 172 special attack, we have to go max speed so we can hit as hard as possible because if we are creeping, say, does he have a base 100? No, he's got no base 100 Pokemon. So we'd be creeping um, Arcanine here. So we'd go down to this spread, and then and then I, I want to get the speed boost. So we're not hitting nearly as hard anymore. We get, we're getting eight attack points, not like EVs, but eight attack points. So I'd much rather just go a spread like this, so we can hit a like a decent amount harder here. Um, well, with our special attacks, obviously Fall Play will be doing the same to Pokemon like Excadrill and everything like that. And also, you know what's awesome? Chase probably realizes, and this front office probably realizes, that I speed creep weirdly. Like, now it's weirdly in this way. I speed creep speed creeps. So usually, I don't just speed creep this closest thing. Sometimes, I speed creep, like, the next thing. So, for example, with Zyger... Mm, not Zyger. Uh, for example, um, say Arcanine is going to speed creep... Okay, Arcanine, what if he would bring it in broad offensively, he'd bring max speed. But say Arcanine would speed creep. What's the next closest thing? Yo, is it Masquerade? So I would go all the way down the Masquerade with it. So that's what I would do. So I'll go all the way down to Masquerade, and I'd speed creep it. I didn't have Masquerade in the last matchup, so that's, that might help make him decide on certain things on his team. But I have Masquerade. So say he goes all the way down to that, and it would be 146 speed. And his front office might catch on that and be like, oh, then they can realize with Latios, hey, we can just run enough speed for max speed Zygarde. We can just totally avoid Naheligo. But if they don't run enough speed for Naheligo, they're going to get bopped. Because I just wanted more power. And you're seeing that right now. So I, I'm trying to, I've been training, it's like Sig, it's like uh, the dog, uh, Siegfried's dog, not Siegfried. Pavlov, Pavlov's dog. He trained him into thinking he's gonna do something like whenever you ring a bell, you get a treat. The dog gets a treat. So basically, I'm just creeping into getting people to think that I'm gonna creep certain ways. Now there's a whole kind of mind games right now, guys. You guys, nobody ever knows how I'm really going to creep. So that's interesting. I could creep very safely and I could be really aggressive with my creeps. You have to change it up. You have to change it up in draft format or you're going to get bopped. Because if we w if we just ran enough speed for Arcanine, he'd outspeed us. But if, if like, he might just realize, think that we're just going to speed creep Arcanine and just make it a little bit speedier. So we'll get him. As long as we're at plus one. We want the speed boost because we are a life orb offensive. Um, we don't want anything else. We don't want the special attack boost. We want the speed boost because that will help us sweep. 
Granted, I really think he'll bring priority in Pokemon like Arcanine. Well, Arcanine's an extreme too long too much. But in Pokemon like Kitmonlee, maybe Mach Punch. Ice Shard and Cloyster, I'm pretty sure. Because if he would have had Ice Shard, if he would have had that damage, he would have been good. He would have been amazing. He would have been great. He would have been good to go. But he didn't have that. So, just saying. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes it just happens the way it happens. But I'm really, really happy with how this team worked out. I did mock a few times with Tyler with this team, and it went pretty well. Um, hacks happened in the mock battle, but, you know, we won like three or four, I think, or something like that. But still, that was the game we lost was the hacks, but it didn't really matter. Um, it's just a mock. Just hope we don't get... Just hope we don't get hacks in this game. We might. Who knows? But that's Pokemon. It's okay if we get hacks. Um, it's okay if he just outplays us. We're gonna do our best to win and keep the title in Title Town, USA, Green Bay, Wisconsin. So thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great day. Like I said, make sure to check out uh, Crimson Sea Bat in the uh, description down below. He's nearing 30,000 subscribers, so that's a pretty big milestone. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and I love you all so very much. Adios, Substrike Army. Bye bye. Peace.